That necklace must be found, and at once. I know, Lila, but how? Apparently, they've searched the place from stem to stern, even covered the grounds, just vanished into thin air. Can I point out for clarification on this George Hayduke, who had signed uh, the letter? Uh, remember, fictional character from a book called the, the, the Monkey Wrench Gang, an environmental activist. It had been if it had been signed by Johnny Appleseed or Paul Bunyan. So it's not an, an individual. She typed it and sent it, and you can describe whether you think it's a, a warning or a threat. Well, the P.S. is you bastards go in there and a lot of people could get hurt. I view that uh, as a threat. And the person who apparently gave her the letter to type, uh, John Blout, was interviewed last week by E&E &E News, to which he said she knew about it far in advance, a couple of months before we headed out to spike the trees, and she had agreed to mail the letter well in advance. So that, to me, is, a, is the threatening letter. But, Mr. Chairman, I, we, we've heard a lot today about how completely disqualified Tracy Stone Manning uh, is to run the Bureau of Land Management. As you've heard from so many of our members, this is a critically important agency, especially for those of us from Western states. People from the East Coast don't know what Bureau of Land Management is because it isn't applying here in the East. It manages almost one-eighth of the land mass of the United States. The Bureau of Land Management is responsible for more than 18 million acres of land in my home state of Wyoming. It's more land than the entire state of West Virginia is under the control of the federal government in Wyoming. And, and it's not just like that in my state. The agency manages over 12 million acres of public land in Arizona, 18, 48 million acres of public land in Nevada, 8 million acres of public land in Colorado, 8 million acres in, in Montana. We have it in Utah, Alaska, all around. It's, it's like this in so many of our states. This agency is also responsible for hundreds of millions of acres of mineral land below the surface, and it is critical to America's energy independence. Included in the land is, manages is almost 65 million acres of federal forests. And as we have heard, Tracy Stone Manning helped plan this tree spiking. She sent the letter, the threatening letter, to the U.S. Forest Service. She did not cooperate with federal investigators, only testified when she received immunity and lied to our committee about it. We've heard about the organizations that support her. Well, the Dallas Safari Club and the Houston Safari Club, which each represent thousands of outdoorsmen and women, they've reversed their support, and now they publicly oppose her nomination. This, this isn't just about groups that work with the agency or even the people who enjoy our public lands. It's about all the employees of the Bureau of Land Management. How can the men and women who work at this important agency respect Tracy Stone Manning knowing she threatened their colleagues at the U.S. Forest Service? President Obama's head of the BLM agrees and now opposes her nomination. It's, it's not clear her radical views have changed. And I say that because in 2018, in an article about Western wildfires, and we've had debates in this committee of what we can do to prevent Western wildfires, her husband had some thoughts. Her husband in 2018, he's Richard Manning, he wrote in Harper's that firefighters should let homes built in forests burn. He said, there's a rude and satisfying justice, he writes, in burning down the house of someone who builds in the forest. Now, Ms. Stone Manning cannot be held fully responsible for the views of her husband or can't be held responsible for those things. But last September, she endorsed them by calling, in a tweet, she called her husband's comments of there's a rude and satisfying justice of allowing homes to be burning, to burn down, a clarion call. This isn't 30 years ago. This was 10 months ago. Tracy Stone Manning endorsed her husband's call to action that homes in our forests should be allowed to burn. We cannot let her lead an agency responsible for fighting forest fires on federal lands. In closing, Mr. Chairman, President Biden has made the threat of domestic terrorism a focus of his administration, talked about it again yesterday. His National Security Council recently released a strategy to address domestic terrorism, which specifically includes the threat of domestic environmental terrorists. 
This is President Biden. How can we confirm someone who admitted to conspiring with terrorists? Each of the senators on this committee needs to consider carefully if they want their names associated with Tracy Stone Manning. All 10 Republicans on this committee have asked President Biden to withdraw his nomination. Tracy Stone Manning should never be director of the Bureau of Land Management. The Senate must reject the nomination. I strongly oppose her nomination and urge each of you to do the same. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator. Senator Risch. Well, Mr. Chairman, I, I've only been on this committee 13 years, but I got to tell you, this is probably the most significant act of an insult to a really good agency and the people in that agency that uh, I've ever seen perpetrated by this committee. I don't know how this uh, nomination has gotten this far, but uh, I, I think that uh, we ought to spend some time looking at that. Let's first of all talk about what tree spiking is for a minute. <clears throat> this is a tree spike. Looks pretty harmless. You put that into a tree and it sits in the tree until the tree is cut and cut up and taken to the mill. I'm probably the only one in this room that's ever ridden a, a carriage. I don't know if you know what a carriage is, but a carriage is a, uh, a piece of equipment in a mill on which the log is set. A person uh, drives that carriage back and forth and saws it into logs. Now, that's all well and good. The, the saw can be of one of two types, either a circular saw in a small mill or more likely a large band saw that goes probably to the roof here and down again. It's about an inch and a half wide and, uh, and double. What happens when the saw hits this spike is what happens in a war when a hand grenade goes off. Shrapnel goes every direction. It destroys the saw, be it a band saw or be it a circular saw, and it will break this also into shrapnel. It will, it will either kill or injure anyone that is within range uh, of the shrapnel. That's what tree spiking is. So why do you put this in a tree? You put this in a tree to kill somebody. It's not put in there for fun. It's not a Sunday school prank. You put this in a tree to kill somebody. That, uh, when I studied forestry, as most of you know, we didn't even study this because it didn't exist back when I was in uh, forestry school. It was only when eco-terrorism, and particularly that uh, involved with the national forests, hit its uh, peak that some uh, genius came up with this idea of how to kill people that are working in the, uh, in the forest industry. That's what tree spiking is. Some of my friends that I've talked with in Congress here have said, well, she made a mistake 30 years ago. This is not a mistake. This, was, this is a knowing, willful, intentional act done with a black, abandoned, and malignant heart intended to kill a fellow human being. This is not a mistake. A mistake is when you reach in your stock drawer in the morning and take out two socks that don't match. This is an intentional act for which people are sent to prison and should be. These, these spikes were put in the trees in the post office sale in Idaho, and they're still there. The Forest Service can't take them out. I asked them if they got plans to take them out. They said, there's no way to take these spikes out of the tree. We, can't, we don't know which trees they're in. Those are still in the tree. Sometime, as time goes on and all this gets lost, it's entirely possible one of those trees is still going to kill somebody in a mill. Well, she wrote the letter, and I'm not going to read the letter in full because it's laced with uh, obscenities, but uh, she said that this letter is being sent to notify you that the post office sale in Idaho has been uh, spiked heavily. Uh, the project required that 11 of us, 11 of us, spent nine days in god-awful weather conditions spiking trees we, we unloaded a total of 500 pounds of spikes measuring 8 to 10 inches in length. And then she goes on with, again, uh, laced uh, obscenities. Um, she admits to writing this letter. She did this as part of the conspiracy to spike trees in the forest. Now, this woman was deeply involved, and uh, uh, the fact that she has tried to minimize her involvement, I get that. Most criminals do that. Uh, but we have evidence, clear evidence, that she was deeply involved, not 
not only evidence from third parties, but from herself, where she admits that, uh, that she wrote this letter. Now, uh, that was, uh, that, and of course she was investigated, as, as uh, Senator Barrasso uh, said at great length. Now, that was 30 years ago. So if you're one of those that say, oh, this was 30 years ago, it was you know, a childish prank or what have you, someone who tries to take the life of another human being this is not something that you can say, oh, it was a childish prank 30 years ago. Somewhere in the deep recesses of her heart and her soul is something so malignant and so bad that she would try to take another life. That remains today. And if you don't believe me, read the stuff that she's written in the last couple of years. Um, so, if you're willing to forgive all that, she committed a felony in perjuring herself to this committee in violation of federal law. The, uh, the, she, she perjured herself in two ways. One is when she denied having been investigated, as the, the record is absolutely clear, she was investigated. And the second one, uh, she said she did not participate in this tree spiking. This was the question, one of the questions that was asked to her. Did you have personal knowledge of participate in or in any way directly or indirectly support activities activities associated with the spiking of trees in any forest during your lifetime? No, under oath. No, under oath. You know, I've, I've prosecuted, I don't know how many cases. This, for a prosecutor, is shooting fish in a barrel. She shouldn't be in front of this committee for, being, for uh, confirmation to a major, major point uh, in this administration. She should be in front of a jury explaining to them why she committed perjury and why she lied to Congress. My friends, look, if you want to, if you want to uh, confirm her, you absolutely can. But believe me, this stain on this administration will last for the next three and a half years. If the Biden administration wants, wants to have the face and the character of their administration represented by this individual, this attempted murder, this perjurer, this liar, this conspirator, if that's what you want in the administration and that's what you want for the face of the administration, here's your person, confirmer. Thank you, Senator. Secretary Hohn, in our last round of questioning, I think we finished up, uh, so I was asking you um, questions about Tracy Stone Manning. Um, you declined to say whether you viewed, whether you agreed with the statement issued recently by a White House official indicating that the nomination of Ms. Stone Manning was a massive vetting failure. Um, now, in a, question, in a questionnaire submitted to this committee, Ms. Stone Manning suggested that she had never been the target of an investigation. Since that time, of course, we've learned that she was, in fact, issued a target letter indicating that she would be indicted on criminal charges related to the tree spiking. Were you or uh, or the department aware of those details prior to her nomination? Senator, I was not aware of those details. Were you or the department aware that Ms. Stone Manning had hired an attorney and negotiated an immunity deal prior to testifying in the tree spiking case? Uh, n no, Senator, I, I did not know that. Did you or the department advise or in any way support Ms. Stone Manning in indicating to this committee that she had never been under investigation? Um, Senator, I have, I have not met um, nor spoken to uh, Ms. Stone Manning. Uh, I understand that is the president's nominee and uh, that she is qualified to do a job that he has asked her to do and, um, and that's pretty much that. What about the department? The department. Have others at the department have done that? Uh, I can't answer that. Uh, we'd, we'd be happy to, to try to answer any other specific questions you have on the record, though. No, as I recall, at the time Ms. Stone Manning was nominated to be the head of the Bureau of Land Management, you had been in office uh, for about a month as Secretary of the Interior. Were you aware of public statements that Ms. Stone Manning had made only months before her nomination, calling for homes built in forest to burn in forest fires? Uh, I had not read any of that, um, um, Senator. And uh, I mean, yes, I am the Secretary of the Interior, but she is the President's nominee. And I, I 
I am, I am not in a, uh, I mean, I didn't nominate her. I, I, I am here to, uh, to move the department forward on the president's priorities, and that is what I am focused on at the moment. Yeah, right. I understand. I, I understand. I, I suspect you can also understand why, as a member of this committee and as a, a senator representing a state, uh, two-thirds of which is uh, owned by the federal government, and at 40% of which is under the control of the Bureau of Land Management, why I might be concerned about that, and why I might be more specifically concerned about the fact that she tweeted an article written by her husband, an article that states, quote, there's a rude and satisfying justice in burning down the house of someone who builds in the forest. She called it a clarion call. Do you agree with that statement? Senator, I don't read Twitter these days, and I, I certainly... Um you know, and I'm not asking whether you read Twitter. I'm, I'm asking you whether you agreed with the statement. As someone who represents a state where a lot of people have lost their homes and their livelihoods and their access to public lands that they care about, Senator, I don't agree with it. Do you agree with it? Senator, every day uh, there is articles about wildfires and fires and pictures of houses burning on the front page of the New York Times, and it... It, it makes me cry every time I see that. Uh, this is a terrible issue in our country right now, these fires, and uh, we're going to do everything we can to, to help remedy that. Do you believe it's appropriate for a person who's shown gratification in seeing homes burn because they're in forests lead a key wildfire fighting agency? Senator, what I can tell you is that um, I am going to do my level best to ensure that we are doing everything humanly possible to make sure that, that fires don't burn down our communities and people's homes. Is it doing consistent with the desire to do everything you can to stop that from happening? want to be consistent with that objective that you've just described, which I appreciate, to put someone in charge of it who's expressed gratification over seeing people's homes burn. Now, and, and she's, she, she has espoused beliefs that, that livestock grazing, allowing livestock to graze on public lands is, quote, destroying the West. Do you agree with that statement? Senator, I suspect that anybody who who is leading in any portion of the Department of the Interior uh, will carry out the laws and the, uh, of this country and the priorities of the president uh, in a very meaningful way. And you don't think she'll be influenced by her feelings of gratification on seeing homes burn in forests? I think that, that anyone who is leading the department will do their best to ensure that we are protecting our public lands for every single American. In her academic thesis, Ms. Stone Manning supported policies to influence Americans to have fewer children. She said it is a problem elsewhere and that Americans should stop at one or two kids. Do you agree with those policies? I, I don't think that anyone can make policies. <laughs> In the same thesis, she published a photo of a child with the caption, can you find the environmental hazard in this photo? She then indicated that, that, she, that the child was the environmental hazard. As the father of three, it, it, it makes my stomach sink to think that anyone would label my child or anyone else's child as an environmental hazard. As, as a parent, I'm sure you, you feel the same way. Were you or your department aware of these statements prior to her nomination? Uh, Senator, my child is 27 years old. I love her dearly. Uh, I wish I could see her more. I, uh, quite is she frankly, an environmental hazard? Uh, she, is, uh, she is her mother's daughter and uh, takes her refillable water bottle everywhere she goes and does whatever she can to honor this earth. Wait a minute. Stop right there. Okay, wait a minute. By implication, this woman just gave a reply to this question in a way that implies that her daughter is not a hazard.
to the climate because she fills her water bottle and takes it with her everywhere she goes. Well, if children aren't all doing that, is that by definition, then, I'm just asking, the same as saying that the child who doesn't carry their own water bottle around with them like you and your daughter do, are not doing everything they can to protect the earth? That they have become a climate hazard? Because that that's what I'm hearing you not say in between your words. See, read between the lines and you'll hear it. The implications are there. That is a roundabout arrogant way of answering a non-answer to a real question. These words, Smithers, that come before the Senate and the other House hearings, the whole radical side are master word Smithers. And there you have it. Unreal. She didn't give one direct answer to one specific question. Uh, even though she made this comment that we would be happy to answer your specific questions. But she didn't. And she won't. And none of them do. Now my thoughts go to these darn Republicans. God bless their little pea-picking hearts. What is this show-and-tell crap? They haven't done a thing to correct the wrongs the non-answers, the perjury, the lying, the obfuscation, the equivocation. It's unbelievable. It's all talk and all show and nothing getting done to really make a change. This is theater, pure and simple in my eyes. Tell me what you think. I see my time's expired. I just uh, close by expressing my strong concerns here. Look, I, 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 I get it. Um, not every official in the U.S. government is going to agree with me. Not every official uh, appointed by a president um, who, who's of a different political party is going to be one that I'm going to agree with. There are a lot of people I can support who I disagree with. In this department, the, the department that you head, and in this um, a bureau that she, uh, Ms. Stone and Manning has been asked to lead. There is immense discretion, discretion that can have catastrophic consequences, not just economically, but uh, uh, for the day-to-day -day lives of the people I represent. That discretion is in many cases, as a practical matter, almost unreviewable. Sure, court challenges can happen, um, but from one day to the next, there are a whole lot of those things that are really ultimately up to the discretion of the director of that office. I, I'd urge you and other members of this administration to reconsider whether this is an appropriate choice. It is not. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, here we go now. Coming up, Senator Munchkin, I'm sorry, Munchin, <laughs> the Democrat, brings up old, irrelevant quotes from legal uh, legalese people I'll say, and gets debunked. It's good. Wait for it. Here it comes. Uh, the allegations, I have 10 allegations have been made against Ms. Stan Ms. Manning, and we have done deep investigations and all those, and I'm happy to share that. I think pretty much everybody's made up their mind, but I'm happy to share that because uh, we truly don't believe the way it's been presented is actually the facts. That's the difference. And we have that, and we can show you that if you care to see that. Rather than me rebutting every time, we'd be happy to share. Well, well, Mr. well Mr. Chairman. Uh, I, I, I think we uh, ought to have that, Joe, actually. Yeah, you <laughs> whatever, know. Whatever you all want to do, I'm happy to we do We got it. the record where she lied under oath to this committee. How can you turn we that don't have, head? We don't have Okay. You can't. You tell me where you see that she lied. She said, were, were you investing? Did you participate in any way? She wrote the letter. She admits she wrote the letter, and she said no. That is a lie. It's a falsehood. Let me just let me just read the facts to you, okay? What you're saying is Ms. Stone Manning lied to the committee when she said she was not aware that she was being investigated and was not a target of the grand jury investigation. 
Now, and Ms. Domani was aware that she was being investigated in 1989. This is basically from Michael Merkley, which you're speaking of. Michael Merkley, who was no, ahead. I'm speaking of the doctor. Okay. That the grand jury sent Ms. Domani a target letter, which meant she was going to be indicted. That's what Michael Merkley said. Here's the facts. Mr. Merkley claimed that Ms. Stone Manning was a target of the grand jury investigation 1989 is directly contradicted by his own sworn testimony at the trial. He was asked if the investigation 1989 had identified possibly anyone as a subject in this matter. He replied, no. Basically, the investi investigation became inactive after I exhausted all of the leads that were developed. All the leads that were developed. His claim that Ms. Stone Manning was a target of the grand jury investigation in 1993 is contradicted by George Bretzamer, Bretzameter, the former assistant U.S. attorney who prosecuted the case. The prosecutor said, told Politico, that she was not a target of the investigation. That was in 1993. Merkley's claim that Ms. Stone Manning actively participated in planning the tree spiking is further contradicted by Mr. Blount, who said, was she heavily involved in the planning? Did she go put a nail in a tree or anything? Absolutely not. So I'm just saying, we're just reading the facts as we have them. Did she write the letter? She no. did not write the letter. She typed the letter. Oh, she typed she the letter. She didn't write did that she, letter. Did she deliver the letter to the United States Forest Service? The I, answer it, to that is yes. The letter she was did. mailed, okay? She mailed but it she, to you're, the United You're States saying States. that that was her that's words. A participa that that's a participation in a conspiracy, black and white. And she says, no, she never participated. Who else would like to speak on? Well, first, Mr. Ma Mr. Chairman, let me just make a rebuttal to, about what the, you're saying that the lead investigator contradicted himself. The claim uh, that he contradicted himself in his court testimony is blatantly false. There's a, a Washington State newspaper, the Spokesman Review, even issued a correction after buying the recent Department of Interior's false claim of a contradiction. The, the newspaper went on, and this is that they said, the original version of the story incorrectly described Michael Merkley's 1993 testimony as contradicting the claim in his July 14, 2021 letter that Stone Manning was sent a target letter by, by prosecutors. In fact, Merkley testified in 1993 only that his initial investigation in 89 had not identified subjects. And I want this article uh, with the correction added to the record. Thank you. No objection. Without you. The truth will set you free. Thank you so much for watching Thin Air Stuff, where I'm sure we're going to find the things that have vanished over time. See ya. Please subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, and give me $5 and I'll bet your life. <laughs> Take care, everyone. Thanks again for watching. Without you. That necklace must be found, and at once. I know, Lila, but how? Apparently, they searched the place from stem to stern, even covered the grounds, just vanished into thin air. Thin air? I'll see you there, or at the judgment seat. You take good care, and be kind to others.